Good morning. I'm using Kevin's camera so I know know what you see or not. So I uh, I'm still in my jammies because this morning when I got up it was just like horrible outside. I got up at 5 30 with the dog and let the dog out. I don't know if you saw my video last night to skip but we were sitting out by the fire. It was 51 degrees and everything like that. Now we got winds blowing at 40 miles an hour and it is snowing. I don't think the videos ever show the snow. But anyway, so the fire was there last night. I was sitting there. It's cold too. That wind is just unbelievable out there. Like say up to 41 miles an hour wind gust. It's not as windy right now as it was a few minutes ago, but it was pretty windy. Excuse me, why? I like my pipe, but it looks like I lost some of my tobacco as I was walking around here. So, I'm gonna do what people call the quick load. Someone once told, uh, I think it was maybe Danny, that they'd never seen anybody load a pipe as fast as he did because he just took a pipe and dipped it into his tobacco and uh, tucked it in there. And that's, I do that too when I'm, especially with this little bitty pipe. I don't know if you saw how small that pipe was. It's a very small pipe. And the reason I'm using a very small pipe, a little bitty pipe. I don't know if you can really see how little that is. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a size one. It actually had a number on it, but it just has a number. 22 on it, which I have no idea what that means because it doesn't uh, mean anything to me. Anyway, so today, because it, <laughs> did you see that? I just flipped that right out. This is why I don't um, usually move around or talk or anything while I am loading my pipe because I pull it right out. The nice thing about this little bee pipe, uh, like I said, you guys can't see really how little that is, but it's a great taster pipe. And today I brought out some tobaccos. I got a <laughs> new plan for my uh, pipes. What I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to take four or five pi good pipes and smoke them all week and then uh, clean them. So many of my pipes need to be cleaned. So anyway, so today... I just thought I would bring out a thing of my tobaccos that are in jars. Some of them are from 2014. Some of them are older. I know I've got some um, 2010 and 2009 uh, Luxury Bullseye in here. Packed very nicely, very tight. There's a few in here. I'm a little 18, 965. House of Calabashes are all looking really good. I'm not seeing anything. They look very moist, and and they're you know when I um, when I turn them, what happens is if you still got some that's stuck to the bottom, I don't know if you can really tell that. See how there's loose on top, but the bottom is still pretty dense. <coughs> that usually means they're they got their moisture still kept in them, and I like that. <laughs> um, but I do have some. I don't know what it is. I believe that's going to be nine sixty five, but. I don't know. I don't know, but it smells nice. This had a label on it, but it's faded off. <laughs> but I'm a nervous about this one. This one looks like some um, some flake. And I don't know if anyone can see, but there's a, a white dust on it. And over the years, because I have smoked over years, um... I've kind of been able to look at something and tell if it's um, mold or sugar crystals. And even though that is flake and it has a tendency to form sugar crystals and it is right on the edges like it should be, it looks a little dusty. Uh, sugar doesn't, the sugars don't look dusty. The sugars stick to it and hold to it and crystallize on that tobacco. And the molds have a tendency to, to once they have um, spored, they kind of get dusty in there. And since there's dust in there, I'm assuming that's going to be moldy. Mm. 
well, something for my fireplace. And then I don't know if you saw these little bitty things I got, but that's um, that's different flavored. Uh, oh, this one's bullseye. Perfect, perfect size for packing bullseye in, isn't it? Um, but the others are suge, suji. I was originally I called it tsugi, tsuge, and then it was suge, and it's su. I call it suji, and uh, I was corrected several times and told it was suge. So whatever it is, it is. You know, it's very uh, cased, and they are uh, from 16 and 15. So I got to do them. They're the gods um, for their for. All, you know, if, if anything, you have to say that Suge had some of the Suge uh, had some of the neatest names for their tobaccos. You almost had to get them just for the tins. I got them for the tins, but all of my friends wanted the tins. And what I'm smoking is I'm going to be smoking some of my Dunhills to get them smoked up. Now, people talked about the difference in the sizes. <laughs> Okay, this is the size that most people have, and this is the size I like. And I don't know if there's any way other than setting them next to each other like this. I don't know what the camera sees, you know. Um, I said, I got some bullseyes and um, bulldogs I want to clean up and stuff. And I started smoking, I started out with all the little ones. Um, that's what I'm going to do first, although this one is. This one's a size three. I like, I like one, twos, and threes. Um, fours start getting too big. Fives are way out of whack. And six, although I have had, uh, for a while there, I was dealing a bunch of fives and sixes. Um, I'd come across a really good deal on them. I picked them up, you know, years ago uh, when they were on sale even though they weren't what I wanted there was a pipe shop going out of business and so I was able to buy you know Dunhills at you know 60% of their cost and um, so I did you know I invested probably you know see that's the difference in pipes now you can't go and invest two or three thousand dollars into pipes now and in 10 years get that money back out of them those of you who are buying pipes for an investment Good luck. Um, it really doesn't work in general, just so you know. You shouldn't really collect them for an investment You should, and not use them. If you're going to use them, then that's a different kind of investment, you know. But if you're just going to buy them and set them there and not use them, if it's not a name pipe, uh, I mean, even the makers, you know. Um, now, I'm not talking about people like Eric or some of them that did so great, you know. There's a difference between... A handmade Nording who's been making them a long time. There's a difference between buying a, a Darius or a, a a show pipe, you know. Those are different. And that's, there again, do you don't buy those for investments because I can tell you right now, I have a wonderful um, Cavalier. It's a Cavalier shape. Uh, Darius Christian. And although I love that man and his wife, I absolutely adore those people. Um, his pipe is, is currently not worth what I paid for it, you know. It's a beautiful showpiece, and I love it. But um, there again, you know, uh, Rick Black's. Uh, you know, we love Rick Black. He, he's my hero. But, you know, if you have a used Rick Black, you don't get nothing for it to, compared to what it's worth. The value and the uh, cost of pipes is all very um, relative. To what you like in a pipe. Oh, I went into a lecture, didn't I? Oh, my goodness. I'm not trying to tell you. Oh, I try and turn off the phone. But his phone's a little bigger and I'm harder to handle. My phone. I've had it for years. It's a Samsung 6. And uh, I got it because I used to do water aerobics all the time. And I still would like to go back to that. But I just don't know uh, when I'm going to get back to it. Um, and it was waterproof. And so... Uh, I had it for years, but the camera uh, went out on it, and uh, they took it into the shop, and does it also have cracked screens, and they basically said, you know, here, you need to give us, you know, four or five hundred dollars, and we'll get you another phone. We can't do anything about the camera on this phone, and I thought for four or five hundred dollars, I could go buy a new camera, <laughs> so I'm kind of, I just, I don't want to,
anything like that, which is the luxury because of our uh, income right now, uh, I'd have to sell a couple pipes for. So I look at that and I look at my pipes and I think, okay, what's the value of the pipe and what's the value that I'll get for it and what um, what's the value it is going to increase in my life with putting a phone in there. And uh, I haven't sold any pipes, so... <laughs> I could sell any of those. I could sell tobacco. That's what I used to do. I was telling you about the investment of all those old Dunhills. Not old Dunhills. Well, now they would be because that was... I bought those in the... Let's see. I quit buying Dunhill tobacco in the 80s because it had, oh, gotten so bad. So if I bought any, I made sure I looked at the date. And any of the 70s early 80s uh, Dunhill tobaccos I bought. But during the 80s and early 90s, you couldn't have convinced me, don't get me wrong, I love my Dunhill pipes and I love Dunhill, but the tobacco from mid 80s to mid 90s that had the Dunhill name on it uh, was not Dunhill quality. So um, I didn't purchase a lot of that during that time frame. Now that I'm looking back on it and they've changed their blender again and all that kind of stuff, um, I wish I'd bought more just to, uh, I guess, sell it, you know, because some people like comparing what the, the before the 80s blenders were for each of these and then after the 80s and through the 90s when it was done by somebody else and then starting in what, I guess, right at 2000, it started being Lane in the who. It, you know, same producers sometimes are the same. Same tobacco companies using the same tobaccos from the same fields. The difference is, is the quality control on all of it. And um, Dunhill's quality control during the 80s and the 90s on their tobaccos went downhill. So there I said it. Uh, their pipes, once again, I've said this before about Dunhill's. If you don't really check them out, you're going to find out that all Dunhill's are not made equal. And um, I gave... A pipe by accident. I was actually just going to get, I wasn't going to get rid of it, but I was never going to give it to somebody. I had a, a Dunhill, it was a size four, that had a really bad drill. And um, I, I use it as an example to show people look, even though it's a Dunhill name, the quality control is where you want to look at it. You know, you can't just take it because it says it's a Dunhill. Well, <laughs> I was given a pipe away, and I had told Kevin, hey, grab one of those pipes that I'm going to get rid of, because I'm getting rid of some of my size fours. And uh, he went and he grabbed a pipe, and we took it to Texas. And when we got there, it was the pipe that was misdrilled. <laughs> so I really felt bad, because I gave somebody... I, I replaced it with one, one of the others I was going to get rid of, but I really felt bad that the first pipe... Dunhill that I gave somebody who hadn't had a Dunhill was a bad drill. <laughs> it's like, oh man, how can you talk about the quality of Dunhill and you give somebody a really bad pipe? So, but I explained it to him, you know, that that was uh, an example of, of bad drills. And uh, I don't know, I know that he knows. Bad aim. I got on my bifocals and they make things look different. Anyway, um, I know he knows people that could probably make him a new bit that would have the whole lineup. It would have to be a misdrilled bit at the bottom. And it wouldn't have the little Dunhill circle, but who cares? Uh, a dot is a dot. See, I'm not a big... Uh, I like my Dunhills. You know what? I have Dunhills that have uh, what looks like no dot on them. They're from the 40s, late 40s, early 50s, but there's no dot on them, you think. And then uh, you realize that somebody has um, covered up the the dot. And that is because in the after the war, during the war, Dunhills were still very expensive. And so... Um, you know, those people who had had Dunhills before when they had a little bit of money no longer have the money. And with the markets dropping and stuff like that. So rather than, uh, a lot of people took and, and disguised the dot 
so that people wouldn't see that they were smoking a Dunhill pipe. And it became a very obvious thing for a while that, um, you know, you you looked for people that, that had a Dunhill pipe because you knew that maybe they had money and could help you. And so uh, people, or they were jealous of them. So um, people started blacking out the little dot. However, I think it's ebony. Ivory. Ebony and ivory. Uh, ivory. And um, it absorbs the the color. So you can never take the color back out. And so sometimes when somebody looks at a pipe and a Dunhill pipe and they see the markings on it, but they don't see the dot and they know it's from the 40s and the 50s, what they need to do is, is look on that stem really close because somewhere on that stem, almost always I have found I will find the dot. You know, you, you really have to look close because they did such a good job of, of keeping that flat. But uh, if you are looking and you know where to look, you might find the black dots. Oh, another lecture. My golly. Um, so what, what do I have that's not a lecture to talk about? Well, I say the weather I covered. Um, you saw what I'm smoking today. Um, I guess I'll get dressed in a little while. The um, coffee and mudslide. Actually, it's not mudslide, it's white Russian. I don't like the mudslide. The mudslides that they make now all have cinnamon in them. And I'm not fond of cinnamon in my coffee. I'm not fond of flavored coffees in general. I don't like this cup because it has such a wide thing on it that you almost have to have a wide mouth to drink it. Oh, another lecture. Oh my. Um, well, I really didn't have nothing to talk about except to say, you know, last night, Skip, you know, when he was having his birthday party, it was 51 degrees in Kansas, in Missouri. I keep saying in Kansas, but I live across the river in Missouri. Oh, I'm never going to get used to that. I've always been a Kansas girl, you know, and even though I basically live in, in, I guess they call us Kansas City proper, even though it's Parkville. Um, I'm just not used to being a, a Missouri girl. Misery girl. I was born in Missouri, so I guess I should be a misery girl. The uh, other thing I was going to say was, oh, about the shots, the COVID shots. Now, I want mine. As soon as I can get mine, I want mine. But <laughs> you got to realize how small Parkville and Platt is. I went online, and it's like, you know, you have to sign up and stuff. And I'm a 1C, which is not anything. You know, I'm not. I don't have the problem. Some people do. Anyway, so, um, and they're just now starting. Went online and for the county of Platte, we've only been issued 500 shots. So my chances of getting the shot in Platte are not going to be good right now. I do want my shot as soon as I get it. I, I As soon as I can, I'm going to get it. Uh, I know that there are pro, con, blah, blah, blah. I haven't uh, ever taken a flu shot. I don't take a shingles shot. Um, you know, very seldom do I, I do any of those because uh, I don't know, just because I usually don't get, get sick uh, with colds and flus and stuff, so. Uh, but then I avoid people. <laughs> I, you know, I did work where I was seeing people all the time, but I was in a cage and I was behind uh, a, an area where, you know, it was easy to keep a six foot distance, even when distancing wasn't needed. Those bars really kept people from being close to me. And other than, you know, the one counter where they would slide money across or that we talked through or I, you know, would deal with them through, um, which was easy to keep wiped off because I did that even before. COVID. Um, I was feeling pretty safe. Now I'd like to get another part-time job, but man, I just don't know that there's, uh, cause I, they don't, I don't want to go back to Leavenworth just because of the drive, especially right now it's snowing outside and I have to be there at five 30 in the morning. So I would be driving 45 minutes on an unlit country road on the side of the river by the railroad tracks going 45 minutes to cross a bridge and go back because <laughs> I would, I live like in a U from there to the bridge. Um, so I don't want to go back to work there, but I just don't really know. You know, I know I'm 
I, I'm retired and stuff, but man, I can't do, I am going crazy here. You know, 12 hours a day of, of, uh, of not working is uh, unusual. And then I think I'm kind of depressed anyway because this coming weekend would have been the uh, Daddy and Me Tea Party, which I always cheered. And last year was unknown to us. We didn't know it was going to be the last year. But last year we had a great tea party. Uh, but COVID hit, you know, and then we couldn't do the superhero or the or the touch a truck or the Easter thing or there's so many things that, that we didn't do last year that involved children, children backpack programs, um, after school programs, you know, the taekwondos that were open to the public, things like this. They quit doing no basketball, no pickleball, no tennis, you know, none of those things uh, we can do anymore. As a matter of fact, at the community center, they are starting this week to change the gym over to uh, a vaccination uh, hit place. And I'm trying to see that since I still work for Leavenworth, if I can get one from there, because I might have more of a chance of... I mean, <laughs> They don't need me anymore. I'm still on their list of temporary employees because they need to keep so many you know, employees to get their money. Uh, so I'm still on their list as temporary employees. I still have all the keys to the place. I still have email to their place. I still have my security codes and everything in place there. It's just that they don't need me. And so they brought me in in September. And for two weeks, I taught people that were already going to be there anyway, my job, part of it, the part that they didn't, weren't able to, didn't know how to pick up on. So I showed them the little bits and pieces that they didn't already know because most of it's clerical and you know, when you learn it, you learn it from somebody who learns it from somebody. So they already had that down. It was just, you know, a little bit that they needed from me. So I went in part-time for two weeks in September, gave them all the information and, and showed them how to do some things and some little tricks that you learn after you work them for, you know, as many years as I had. Um, and then uh, they said, well, we'll call you when we need you. And that was like, okay. <laughs> And they haven't called me for a year, so I guess they're not going to need me for a while. But I like the idea of knowing that if I ever um, needed, a, needed a job and, and couldn't find one, that if I went back and, and begged, I could probably get my job back there at the community center. I just don't know that I want to drive 45 minutes every day. To, even if they changed my hours, I would still be coming home at after 8 o'clock, 8.30, on that same road at night in the dark, so... In the summertime, that wouldn't be bad, but it's not summer. You know, we're just now. <laughs> it's February, and this is usually when we really get our snow, is in February and March. People always used to think, you know, we got some in October, a, a good good dumping, and then the temperatures went up to 60 and 70 degrees. And then we got another, and, you know, it just keeps going. Well, happy, happy, joy, joy. You know I'm watching you.